case file 107444. Agent One Eyed Jack reporting. I was being sent up north to a pretty far forward place in Canada. Usually during the summer, it isn't really snow weather, uh, even with being so far north. However, a mysterious blizzard had started about four or five days prior. And now I was being sent to explore why. It didn't make much sense for it to be, just in case it was natural, but if it wasn't, that was my specialty, finding out things. July 8th. So here we are, or I should say here I am, driving up north. I have a snowmobile in my truck, and I have my trusty knife and a, my trusty rifle. I have been working for the agency for quite a while, and I have seen a lot, but what I had seen on this particular case shook me, because it was not exactly what I was expecting. Continuing to drive up, the snow started to come down as soon as I hit the edge of this particular weather bubble. It seemed to have been perfectly sitting still now for almost a week. A little strange for it to have started already, but it doesn't make sense that it isn't moving. Once I hit this particular bubble of snow, it was a good foot of snow on the ground in the road itself. All the areas surrounding were much more than that. The people up here are used to cutting the snow, you know, using snow cutters, not just simply um, snow plows. So I head f into the town to find out exactly what's going on. I reach a bar and I decide to park and go inside. There's a few people in here. I can see mostly men who probably are here on their lunch break as it is relatively early in the day. I sit down by the bar and I ask the barkeep if he knows anything about this weird weather. He says no, and says that it's not a very good place to be right now. Some people have gone missing. That's not good. Of course, if you're not careful during a snowstorm, you could just go missing naturally. So I ask him many questions about why he thinks the weather is the way it is right now. He doesn't know. So I order myself some lunch and I prepare myself to go out into the woods surrounding this town. After lunch, I get on my snowmobile, I leave my vehicle parked right there, and I go out into the woods. Timestamp 2 p.m. Being this far north, and during summer, there tends to be a little bit more daylight than if it was winter, so I have extra time to look around. But, even with that, this snow coming down makes it hard to see anything. As I drive around into these woods, I see tracks. I stop for a second. I look at them. Human. So I begin to follow them, slowly. My special ability is tracking. It's perhaps seemingly one of the weaker abilities from the agency, 
However, I don't miss. I continue driving after these tracks and find that they lead off into a wide open field and then tracks stop. I get out and I start looking around, but there's no sign of anything. It's not even that the snow covered up tracks, I'd be able to see if there were footprints even through the snow. They just stop. I turn around, get back on the snowmobile, start driving around. I see more tracks like this in different areas, but finally there's a breakthrough. One of the sets of tracks stops, but a different type of track shows up. It looks like something was hopping through the snow. The footprints are much larger than a normal human, and it looks literally like it was jumping, not like it was walking. I highly doubt that it's one of the Saskets or the Janasquas, but I'm not sure. So I decide to head back into town now and see if maybe anybody knows anything about who or what could have made those tracks. And I also need to book a room for the night. This is going to probably be a several day mission. Timestamp, 5 p.m. Returning to the bar, the barkeep is still the same man, but now there's a few more people, not just men, but also women. It seems like this is a good place for people to just get together and deal with what's happening. So I go up to the barkeep again, and I ask him directly, Are you having Bigfoot problems? He looked shocked, but he said no. Instead, he said they have had problems with Wendigos in the past, but this was such a long time ago that it almost seems like it was just a story. Wendigos. Plural. That is not good. Those tracks mean that they're dead. If they're gone, they're dead. Eat. Wendigos are cannibals. Very dangerous. Very strong. Very fast. A form of undead, but not a traditional undead. I thank him for his information. And then I decide it's time to go head back to the, well, to go head to a hotel that I can stay at. So that is what I do. I head back to the hotel, get myself a room, and I prepare myself for the next day. There was a knock at the door. And I thought, strange. But I open it, and a man named Cody, as he identifies himself, hands me a piece of paper, tells me, this will at least get me started on the right track. I nod to him and thank him. Strange, I don't know who he is, and... In particular, his name is Cody, not Cody. So I take this piece of paper, and it addresses that there are several Native American uh, habitations that are not far from here, and that I should go talk to them. So that is what I'm going to do in the morning. I must prepare myself for the next day.